911, where is your emergency? I have, I have a police order. Um, um, I have a, a injunction against harassment. Uh, my neighbor is on my property. Okay, he's on your. You said he's on your property. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Before we begin, a warning. You're about to witness some heartbreaking audio. I don't know what's going on, but this helicopter is circling, and there's somebody at the end of her driveway yelling. You could hear them a moment ago. Private moments that should have stayed exactly that, and in my opinion, some of the most disturbing footage ever uploaded to the internet. I think we're going to have uh, gold Prius at the front gate to his house. He's opening the gate right now. That should scare the hell out of every American. Captured not by me, but by the Pima County Sheriff's Department. This is going to allow us to at least double uh, our service to the community of Pima County. From January 2023 to the present day, Mr. Gold and his wife have endured a relentless terror campaign which includes several mental health orders, over 50 police reports, 10 charges of disorderly conduct, neighbors weaponizing their children against him, and forcibly trying to make Mr. Gold sell his home. And I know this story seems unbelievable, but it gets even worse. The sheriff's department, the prosecutor, and the courts are all actively trying to get Mr. Gold locked up in a mental institution. In today's video, we are going to explore key events from August to December of 2023, and bonus footage at the end. While I was editing this video and on the phone with Mr. Gold, the Sheriff's Department decided to make a flyover. I am, I'm taking a video right now, I mean directly over my house. Now I can only assume, but it sure looks like retaliation for me making this video right here. And they also tried to cover their tracks, but I'll show you how we caught them red-handed all right now i want you to imagine you're sitting in your car enjoying an evening thunderstorm and someone approaches you you've never met in what appears to be an aggressive manner and instead of engaging them you decide to drive off the next day you head back out to the road near your house to enjoy the sunset and take some pictures again, only to be ambushed by the same neighbor and now three others, disturbing your peace once more. This is exactly what has happened to Mr. Gold and seems to have begun a frightening series of events. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you. Put your hands on the steering wheel. Can I see your hands, please? Don't reach for your center console. Put your hand in the air. Show me your badge. I'm not a cop, but you keep reaching for your center console. And we don't know what you're reaching for. He reaches for the center console for what I'm concerned. He does that to get behind that block wall. The following day, two more police reports were filed against Mr. Gold. One about him making noise, and the other him standing at the end of his neighbor's driveway the same neighbor that confronted him on the road and mocked his wife the day before. Then, in September, the calls died down, and it is believed that is because Mr. Gold's neighbors flew all the way to Georgia to look into his background and dig up dirt on him. How do we know this? It was added in the police report. I then made contact with Mr. Combs, who was one of the reportees. He advised he had a file approximately an inch thick of information pertaining to Mr. Gold. And the detective was informed that he flew all the way to Georgia to acquire this information. And this is when the narrative began to shift and Mr. Gold's neighbors tried to portray him as a threat to their children by filing this injunction of harassment that was ultimately dismissed. This is important because it wasn't dismissed until December, and it appears that Mr. Gold's neighbors were trying to set him up to violate it. Then, on September 20th, the Pima County Sheriff's Department filed this report that ultimately ended up with Mr. Gold being charged, long form, but it wasn't until January 10th, 
2024 that he was served. Now do me a favor, pause the video so you can take a moment to read and fully grasp this absurd probable cause statement. And when we get to the end of the video, I want you to let the sheriff's department and the prosecutor's office know whether you think Mr. Gold is the one doing the terrorizing. Yeah, and the three counts that they had on here is actually ten counts. And on October 1st, the calls started ramping up again, beginning with claims of a woman screaming and the sheriff's department jumping Mr. Gold's fence and having TPD helicopters circle overhead. Even though they admit, in their report, they heard the screaming coming from his neighbor's house. Yep, the one that recently got back from Georgia. And then they painted Mr. Gold in a negative light for freaking out because they jumped his fence. And then, on October 2nd, out of an abundance of caution, Mr. Gold called the sheriff's department because his neighbor's children were continually driving by the gate to his property and filming him. This put Mr. Gold in fear that he would be accused of violating the recent injunction of harassment. Three days later, Mr. Gold was leaving his house and the neighbor's children began to follow him, so he stopped, pulled out his camera to document it, and then called the sheriff's department. And then, while waiting for the sheriff's department, the children's mother came by to give him some dirty looks. Then her husband, the same man who confronted Mr. Gold with a gun in August, came by to show his displeasure. And the honking wasn't enough, so the neighbor had to get out and make some defamatory statements. You're stalking my children. I'm going to call the cops and have you arrested. I'm calling the cops. You're nuts. After not saying a word, and in fear for his life at this point, Mr. Gold decides to drive to the sheriff's department to file the report, while his neighbors call 911. And this is where we believe Jesse Wayne came into the picture in his attempt to be Captain save -a Here's some footage from a few days later on October 8th, where Mr. Gold's security team documented the neighbor's children still driving by the entrance to his property. Now, unlike the neighbor in the sheriff's department, I have zero problem with it. Not until the neighbors try and weaponize and use the children to get Mr. Gold arrested. You would think that if you were afraid the neighbor was stalking your children, you wouldn't have them drive by the entrance to his property. And this is where our story takes a dark turn, not just for Mr. Gold, but for all of us. On October 9th, the Sheriff's Department was called on Mr. Gold, this time by a do-gooder named Allison. When well, Mr. Gold was coming home from dinner and was almost home when he noticed a car that looked a lot like his neighbor's parked on the side of the road. He drove past, but when the car pulled up behind him, he decided to stop and let them pass. The car drove ahead, made a U-turn. Now in fear, Mr. Gold drove off. The caller later claimed he had run over a small bush. And what followed was nothing short of frightening. There's somebody at the end of our driveway yelling. I am taking video to record it. Let's lock the door. I'll, I'm, I'm going to take video. Yeah, I'm going to take a picture. I will. I will. Yeah, I will. what's going on but this helicopter is circling and there is somebody at the end of our driveway yelling you could hear them a moment ago
He's fine. Who are you? You guys okay? Who are you? Identify yourself, please. Obviously and understandably being shook up, Mr. Gold reached out to his attorney, Tamara Malembo, who interestingly enough just recently worked for Laura Conover at the county prosecutor's office regarding his concerns about being surveilled. She noted several red flags in his latest email, explaining that the sheriff's department does not deploy aircraft for minor offenses unless they involve more serious situations. This led her to conclude that either a serious investigation was underway or that the police aircraft were not involved at all. She suggested scheduling a meeting to discuss the matter further. And then, as recent as last month, the neighbor's attorney, Walter Nash, responded to Mr. Gold's motion to dismiss, claiming he was exhibiting paranoid ideations and believing in a conspiracy regarding his surveillance by aircraft. I also want to point out that Walter Nash is a neighbor of Mr. Gold's, and since when does a victim's attorney respond to the defendant's motions, and not the prosecutor? Not only that, but this guy is on a committee that appoints the judges in Pima County and Superior Court. I'm not sure what's going on here, but it smells a little bit like bullshit. And for you, Mr. Gold, you're not having paranoid ideations of aircraft surveilling you. It's really happening. Here's the footage I acquired. And survey one, I think we're going to have uh, gold Prius at the front gate to his house. He's opening the gate right now. Two cent information echo, current. Looks like he might be on the phone. And survey one, he's back in the driver's seat. Good 
Two two four Golf. Is there one navigation to Ryan in change your eyes over to your approved? Good day. Sounds good. Uh, we'll switch over and uh, squawk VFR. Have a good one. Two four Golf. There's nothing information November current. Survey 191. Survey 1, go ahead. Did he make it into the house? He's not in the house, but he's pulled up to uh, almost the end of the driveway. And he's kind of just standing at the rear of the vehicle. I think he's on his phone. 10-4. He still has the vehicle lights on, so when you guys get to the gate, you'll probably see his tail lights. Ten four, and did he close the gate? Ten four. Seven one four test. Seven one four twenty two hundred. Tucson Oxford 4756 with a VFR request. Oxford 4756, Tucson approach, Tucson on summer 29085, same request. 29085, and uh, we are a Papa 28 Alpha looking for flight following back to Falcon Field. Um, we are currently four miles to the north of Ryan Airfield, and our top altitude is 7,500 for Oxford. 4756, squawk 4317. 4317, Oxford, 4756. Oxford, 4756. It's like they're driving down the street towards it now. All right. Oxford 4756, our top altitude is going to actually be 6,000. 
Destiny at Survey 1. He's out of the vehicle, but the lights are still on. He's kind of just standing in the headlights. Roger. Temper. Uh, now he's getting back in the, the driver's seat, it looks like. So one four ten twenty three. One nine one four three. Twenty two. Yeah, and he's pulling the vehicle all the way up to the main house now. Seven one seven, you can be the last unit. Anyone else is coming? Go check. Ten nine. Is it seven one seven? Are you ten sixty? At ten four. All right, ten four. If there's anyone else that's coming to the check wall for, they can go ten eight. And survey one. It looks like his wife is home. They're both out in the, the driveway now. All right, 10-4. How are they going inside? Not at the moment. They're just out by the car talking. I keep looking out towards you guys though. Seven one four, you can sound the clock. Seven
Yeah, it's for everyone. Looks like the wife's walking out towards you guys. And just for your information, Jeff went inside the house. Now, I don't know about you, but this <laughs> scares the hell out of me. Now, a week later, Mr. Gold is near his home when an F-150 tries to run him off the road. His security team places a call to 911 to report it. Now let's read this very short narrative as it almost makes it seem like Mr. Gold is imagining this vehicle. Mr. Bradford is security for Mr. Gold. As he was following Mr. Gold in a vehicle, Mr. Gold turned west on an intersection near his home. Mr. Bradford stated he then followed and observed Mr. Gold drive up onto the curb. Mr. Gold stated a silver F-150 that had passed eastbound had run him off the road. No contact was made between the vehicles, and no injury or damage incurred. Mr. Bradford was unable to get the plate of the 150. No other suspect information. Two weeks later, an involuntary mental health order was signed by petitioner Detective Nosick of the Pima County Sheriff's Department to have Mr. Gold's mental health evaluated. The following day, Detective Nosick created this report and claims he was advised that a mental health order exists for Mr. Gold. Seems kind of disingenuous if he was the petitioner, no? Anyways, on the 13th of November, Detective Nosick contacted Mr. Gold's attorney to inform her of the order. The day after that, Detective Nosick, along with Detective Lovato and Detective Bermudez, set up surveillance on Mr. Gold's home. Now keep in mind, this is over a guy who is apparently making some racket at his house. Does anyone else find this bizarre? Anyways, the following day, the mental health order was closed, but the flurry of 911 calls continued. I won't go into all of them in this video, but the calls consist of two neighbors complaining that Mr. Gold sent his security team to the HOA meeting to threaten them, as well as more noise complaints that were refuted by his now 24-hour security. Up until the 17th, where oddly enough, Jesse Wayne Comeo had already been at the neighbor's house when the process server showed up with Mr. Gold's injunction of harassment. And interestingly enough, I just recently received this email that said the report didn't have a 911 call. Are the neighbors texting Jesse Wayne directly now? And did they get a heads up that the injunction of harassment was heading their direction? The following two days, each of the neighbors took turns calling noise complaints on Mr. Gold once again, which leads us to the month of December and the 911 call you heard in the beginning of the video. Now to give you context, this call was after the neighbor's injunction was dismissed and Mr. Gold's was granted. Now armed with that information, listen to this 911 call in its entirety and let me know what you think about this situation. where is your emergency? I have a police order. Um, um, I have a, a injunction against harassment. Uh, my neighbor is on my property. Okay, he's on your. You said he's on your property. Yeah. Okay. okay what's your name? Uh, 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 well, what happened? At this point. Not only being terrified by his neighbor, but also being terrified that the sheriff's department is going to lock him up in a mental institution, Mr. Gold hung up and then called back after he composed himself. What I wanted to do was I wanted to have someone there take action in regard to an injunction against harassment that was filed with the Pima County Court 
against a neighbor and for a neighbor violating that order. But what has happened before and is happening again tonight is it's being turned around as a mental health complaint against me because of a involuntary commitment order the sheriff's department got against me, which my attorney has spoken to them about is invalid. But what is valid is the injunction against harassment. And you're telling me I have to go to the court about that, or I don't understand? I'm not, I, I can't answer any of those questions. I'm not, I don't have any experience with the law or anything like that. But uh, you can talk, to, I can get you to talk to the deputy again if you'd like. They, they're the ones that are going to be the ones that are going to have the answers for you. I know that the, it's the courts that give these out. They're civil. It's a civil thing. It's not a, a necessarily a criminal thing. Okay, and if they're not enforcing it, I'm, then I'm not sure. You'd probably have to go talk to the courts and say that they're not enforcing this injunction. But who's so not enforcing I can, it? I can, get you, I, can, I can have you talk to the deputy again. To say that the sheriff's not enforcing it? or You can tell the courts that, yeah. Okay. Okay. Did you want to talk to, did you want to, talk to the deputy again? Um, can I talk to him by phone? Yeah, I can. I, we can do that. Uh, let me let me see if he'll, if I can if I can transfer you to him or if he's going to need to call you back any, any okay. moment. Okay, thank here. you. <laughs> they left before I was able to go outside. Oh, I Everybody's thought they're gone. down there. No, I'm they're gone now. Me. They're gone. So just if you want to, he was called and said that they had a mental health complaint against me and that the IH is a civil matter, not handled by the sheriff. So I was trying to get that on tape, but then he said it differently, I guess, when he realized I was recording it and asking the same question. Well, it's on his recording. Yeah. Um, well, regardless, they've left now, and given everything, we should probably just talk to Tamara in the morning. Okay, okay I'm going to transfer you to the deputy. Hold on. Okay. Stand for me. Yeah. Hi there. Um, I was trying to figure out how or who one talks to to get an injunction against harassment enforced. Is this Jeff? Yes, it is. Hey, Jeff. So we were just out there and we tried to talk to you, but it didn't seem like you wanted to talk. Um, would you be willing to come out and talk to us if we went back over there? Well, the my attorney told me not to unless it's in regard to the injunction against harassment but the person I was speaking with just a few moments ago said that they were trying to get a mental health team out to evaluate me for mm -hmm. my mental health issues but that has nothing to do with having an injunction against harassment by a neighbor who I believe violated that injunction tonight so, just so I have it straight, you have an you you have a current injunction against them. Yes, I do. Okay, how do you think that they violated that? Um, they, I don't know the ex exact distance because I'm not looking at it, but I think they're supposed to stay a hundred feet away from me, plus have no contact. And I believe okay. one, they were closer than a hundred feet, and two, they were yelling at me, and I'm not sure what they were trying to do but it scared me and I got really panicky and went back in my house and so I called. So we talked to that neighbor? So yeah, so we talked to that neighbor. I can't remember uh, his name off the top of my head. Brian. Um, yeah, but he, so that person told us that he had heard the car alarms going off in your yard and he just came out to the roadway so he wasn't in your yard or anything like that. He just came out to the roadway and yelled to make sure you were okay because he heard a lot of car alarms and, and a lot of, like, ruckus going on. Um, that's the whole reason he was trying to yell at you to see what was going on. Uh, that's, there was no car alarms, and the same report was made two nights ago. I wasn't even in town two nights ago. Okay. And I got called from the sheriff about that. Uh-huh. Well, like I said, that's why we originally got the call. Um... So you got a call from my neighbor. We got a call. I'm not sure exactly which one called. I'd have to look. Um, 
But yeah, we got a call from the neighbor about the car alarm just going off again. It was the damn sheriff. There. Okay. Never, never mind. Just disregardless. I'm gonna call my attorney. Thank you. Okay. Have a- what the fuck? Now, it would be one month later that Deputy Varela conspired with the neighbors to have Mr. Gold snatched up while he was out walking his dog. And who would show up to the scene to accost Mr. Gold? Well, none other than Jesse Wayne Comio. And hopefully I butchered your last name, bro. Which are these two videos if you haven't seen them yet. If you guys want to check out the 911 calls and the over 100 hours of body cam footage, I will be uploading them to the members area. But in the meantime, please give a thumbs up and some feedback in the comment section. Here's further proof that these scumbags are lying. Take a look at this recent email they sent saying no records were found. Now, I've been trying to get my hands on some aerial footage for three years now without any luck. But I think I got a break with the footage you just watched that it turned up in a police report. Funny enough, I requested the footage for both December 28th and December 29th, but the records department claims there is nothing. Why the fuck you lying? Why? Why you always lying? Yet here we are with clear evidence of a Survey 1 or 2 flyover of Mr. Gold's home on both days. I'd sure love to see some of that footage, especially when you're up there using that million dollar setup to spy on women around Tucson. You know what I mean, boys? Now let's get to that bonus footage I promised you. What are you doing, scumbags? But first, I need everyone to understand that there are apps such as Flight Radar where you can see info on planes flying overhead but the sheriff's department can ask the FAA to not broadcast their ADS-B signal or public information, which essentially puts them in private mode. And then they can go one step further and turn off their transponder altogether, where they're completely hidden. Now, I know that's a bit of technical jargon, and I'm definitely no expert, but it's important for what I'm about to show you. In the center of the screen, you're going to see a yellow plane appear right where my cursor is at, at approximately 7.47 p.m. That is Survey 1, and it's going to circle the airport roughly seven times until approximately 8.22 p.m. To understand how we had to put this all together, we first had to use this radar track, which is not easy to find, and then we downloaded the audio from dispatch. We then synced them all up with the footage that I took to provide you guys the full picture. Now after circling approximately seven times, you're going to see a slight glitch, but then the plane icon reappears and heads east towards my location. You see it passes my location and veers right before apparently turning off its transponder. It then flies directly overhead of me at 8.33 p.m. and then turns its transponder back on at approximately 8.37 p.m. where it reappears on the map then goes in for a landing at approximately 8.44 p.m. Now, I don't understand why you guys are so fucking stupid, but that was the worst thing that you could have done by using a million-dollar aircraft for a joyride over top of my house. And since it is such a short flight, it'll be easy to get every detail of that flight. Now, here it is all together. When they're trying to be sneaky, they'll use the term Survey 1 switching east. I am. What are you doing, scumbags? You fucking scumbags. You should listen to them. Let's see where they go. Yeah, they swooped out and then came around and then came back over. And now they've left my location. You're going to hear dispatch say now, survey on west. Everyone on west. That's why. I mean, it's just kind of, I don't know. To to me, it's kind of, I'm dying to see the video of it. You ain't seen nothing yet. I think it's time for this country to take back our country. This is an issue of government transparency. 
We can't trust a government that does not trust its people. We're going to uncover the cover-up, and I hope this is just the beginning of more people coming forward about this.